I'm so happy to see all of you here. This is my uh, studio, and I do a series that's kind of intuitive. It's not regular. It's kind of when I can get my shit together about every three or four months where I uh, give this wall, which you can't really see, over to an artist to do whatever the hell they want, and we have a party and event for uh, one evening. It's called Gutter Blood on the Wall. Uh, gutter blood is old uh, Scottish slang for the kids you grew up with in the street. So it's sort of about community, and we do have a few of the artists uh, who have shown here tonight. And um, I wanted to mention it is DIY, so if you guys are inclined, we have a little table over there. We have a gutter blood on the wall edition one, which is a collection of the first six artists, the first five artists uh, that I've shown, and uh, it all fits into a box. So if you look into the vitrine, you can see what's in there, uh, minus Emily's towels. But uh, if you're inclined, let us know after. Um, so uh, another thing I cannot forget to say is I really need to thank my buddy, Rita Marie Ross, is up there. She is my next one. Yes, she's my sister, and I would not have been able to do this without her. If you guys want to grab a drink, uh, feel free. There's a bar over there if you're thirsty. <laughs> and if you guys want to come in and sit? Are you comfortable? Okay, as long as everybody's comfortable. Anyway, uh, Rita helped me build soundstage uh, with um, these wonderful panels. She lent me chairs. Uh, she has put up with my nervous breakdowns and uh, has helped me with that up there, which we're very new at. But I just really needed to give a sh shout out to um, Rita. So, anyway. <laughs> so, uh, I want to introduce the panelists, unless you guys know everybody. Yes. This is Jill Schroeder of Grey Duck Gallery. This is Kevin Ivester of Ivester Contemporary. And this is Jamie Poole, who is the Artist Liaison and Operations Manager uh, Laura Reynolds Gallery. And uh, just a little background. Um, I uh, First of all, I love all three of these guys. I love their galleries. There's a lot of great galleries in Austin, but part of the reason why I invited them is because each time I would go visit them, it's come up before where I'm like, hey, how do we turn all this tech money is pouring into Austin into art collectors, you know, and they're we're all like, and it just, <laughs> one day just popped in my head, so I should sit them all down and we'll, you know, we talk about it. So part of it is uh, each one of you are very different, you have very different personalities, but you do one stellar show after another in your own way. Everybody has your own styles, you have your own programming, you have your own way of approaching things, um, but it's just consistent. And you guys work your ass off. But it's also like the mensch factor with each of you is sort of off the charts, which is related to what gutter blood is about. It's not about who's who and me, 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 which is why it's gutter blood. It's about cool people who love each other and get together and hang out and support each other as a community. So there's artists, there's art, you know, there's art collectors, there's art dealers, there's it's it's all art workers, you know, the proletariat of the art force, um, and uh, just really great people, which is foremost the most important thing. Which is why Thank I brought you guys together. Thank you so and much. And I'm so glad. I, when they all said they did it, I just about shit my pants. I was like, <laughs> wow, you know, they said yes? Really? You want to do this? you got to be kidding. Anyway, so we're doing it. And uh, thanks for being here. Um, this is a big subject. So I just want to point out that um, we're just getting the conversation started. So wherever it goes is wherever it's going to go. The other is if you can hold off on your comments and questions until these guys have a chance to warm up a little bit, and then about halfway through we'll open it up. Sound, sound good? Cool. Sure. Yeah. So, sound yeah. good with you? Okay. So, um, I'm going to read out the two primary questions, and then I'm going to let you guys go at it. Wow. Um, so, the first question is, how can a desire and demand for great art, equal in excitement to tech, be cultivated in this town, and how can some of the onrushing cash flow be channeled into an expanded and more vibrant <coughs> art market. The other is, which I think is uh, really crucial in a lot of people's minds, is the importance of brick and mortar galleries. 
and I'm going to read something that takes one minute. It's something I put together that's a combination of what uh, Christina uh, Reese wrote in the Glass Tire uh, about defending art um, galleries, you know, what they meant to her, and of course Dave Hickey from um, Eric Guitar, and I am a Dave Hickey groupie. I have loved him for years. Um, and he also started, of course, the uh, clean, well-lit place in Austin in the 70s. So if you haven't read Eric Tarr. Anyway, I'm going to read this and we're going to get going. Okay. Gallerists, aside from artists, are the most salient risk-takers in the art world. Bolstered only by their sharp eye and keen instincts, they show and advocate for the art they believe in, build social currency face-to-face, -face, and personally put themselves on the line to do it. It's not a day job. It's not safely nested within an institution, institution blah, 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 the winning side, or regulated public opinion. Rather, they're voluntary participants who water the edge and drive the conversation forward. Because in Dave Hickey's words, it's a matter of heart and not policy, a matter of live commitment and not bureaucratic accreditation, which is part of my honor for you guys. But I, I feel that really strongly. Um, but anyway, uh, I didn't put any thought into who wants to go first. <laughs> With either of those questions, or just in general? Yeah, well, what's your, what's your response to this? The second question is easier. <laughs> it is. Let's start with that. It is easier. First of all, I love that quote also, both of those that you kind of uh, put together as the intro online for this talk. Those are, those are knockout quotes and exactly why I think we all work in the industry that we do and why we move through life in the way that we do. I mean, the importance of a brick and mortar gallery, I mean, where can I begin? Yeah. Looking at an artwork on your phone, looking at an artwork on your laptop, is nothing like standing in front of an artwork. In real life, we all in this room know that to be true. It will continue to be true, it will always be true. Yeah. There will always be a place for some sort of brick and mortar, face-to-face -face interaction with artwork. Mm -hmm. And uh, we all, full disclosure, we all hung out last week because we never get to hang out. We're always, you <laughs> know, working, you know, on a patio working in our galleries, <laughs> working in our galleries nose to the grindstone, you know, so it's like even to just, I'm so thankful to Sona for putting this together to yeah. even kind of let this collaboration and this friendship blossom because it is really important. Mm -hmm. um, but I was saying when we, when we hung out last week that I really feel like for a robust arts community, like Everything, at every level, all pistons of the whole engine have to be firing. You have to have yeah. DIY spaces. You have to have artist-run spaces. You have to have the white cube. You have to have galleries at every level, show spaces at every level. You have to have all of a sudden. You have to have northern southern. You yeah. have to have all of these great spaces, but we need more of them. Mm -hmm. There are so few. Laura Reynolds is the only gallery quite like it in Austin all of a sudden is one of the only spaces quite like it in Austin. Maybe there's one or two others. Grey Duck, Ivester, everyone's very unique, and especially because there are too few venues for showing art. And, and you know, the more venues you have to experience art in person in all these ways, in all these different capacities, um, I think it's super important, and that will always have meaning. I mean, for sure, Art at a really high level is selling online for hundreds of thousands of dollars. And that will continue to happen because that level of art is a business. That's not interacting with art in any kind of personal way. That's art as commerce. That's not art as life, art as love, art as investment in what you dig in your soul. You know, art as commerce happens up here, over there, in another stratosphere. That's not why we're in this business. Right. That's not why I'm in this business. Right. So for me, it's yeah. super important, and will always be important. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think off the top of my head, one of the nicest things about a gallery for me is the opportunity for artists to exhibit their work. Mm -hmm. And uh, I sort of think about single pieces of artwork as like an artist speaking a single sentence of their story. Oh, that's nice. um, yeah. that's and to be able to bring an, an entire exhibition together now you get a fuller idea of what that artist is really trying to say with that particular series of work. Um, and only when you're standing in the space surrounded by that work do I feel like the, the message is spoken clearly. Um, and, let's see. 
I mean, the job of an artist is becoming more and more tied to selling your work, making a website, being on Instagram. There's a lot of different jobs that an artist is having to fill in uh, recently. Yeah. It's, it's all new, and it's, I think that it puts a lot of good power into the artist's hand. It gives them more control, and um, you're less at the sort of whim of whoever is representing your work. But um, it's my opinion that the, the gallery's job is supposed to be um, an advocate for your work and somebody who can speak clearly about your work mm -hmm. um, and can represent you. And, um, you know, when you're supposed to be in your studio painting, it's my job to invite people into the space, look at your artwork, and talk to them about it, you know, accurately. And um, the other thing that happens when it comes to, you know, people looking at artwork is, frankly, you know, people might not have a lot of context when they approach your work. Mm -hmm. um, they might ask, in their words, bad questions, which, you know, I invite, I love, I love all there sorts of no questions. questions. Yeah. There's, there's <laughs> That's right. People always preface their questions with like, I don't want to, I don't want to sound stupid here, but. They do always, yeah. yeah. But, and, and they're not bad questions, yeah. though. Um, but I think that maybe that window is open a little bit wider to a gallerist instead of to the artists themselves. Um, mm -hmm. And when somebody wants to look at artwork and speak openly about it. A gallery is a good place to do it with a group of people. Yeah. yeah. I, I also think that um, having a show in a gallery is, it's like a celebration. Like, I've made this body of work. I want to have a party. <laughs> I want to invite friends. Um, and all sorts of other people that have never seen my work before. Um, articles are written about it when shows are presented. Um, and, and it's this like pinnacle and granted you have to do this all the time, but, um, I think it gets everyone excited, mm -hmm. um, and ready to see it and talk about it. Yeah. And, yeah, and I think that shifts a little bit into the other question yeah. is because part of what we're talking about is social currency. You know, it's not online. It's between people. You're, you're building relationships. And um, I'm speaking from the point of view of an artist. You know, I have a dealer, and I love him. I have been with him for 30 years. Um, and the things that he's opened up for me is amazing. But um, it is um, the aspect of social currency and also what you're saying, Jamie, about um, having more, you know, and that our all pistons are are firing. The thing about, actually it's what Hickey calls romancing the looky-loos, um, about turning <laughs> looky-loos into participants, which could be, you know, part tech money, they, there, there's a, it's a different uh, kind of uh, existence and interests, but it's almost like a form of seduction. But the more points of engagement, the more, um, the, whole, the more the whole thing escalates, the more people, people want to come in. So it is, it is that aspect of inviting people in. You know, and also like art parties are fun. You know, it's full eccentric. <laughs> For <you know>. sure. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's, uh, so, and I think that's important that it's sort of like getting people into the party and getting people to buy art and getting people to get turned on. So the, the more, the more it's ramped up. Mm -hmm. And then also, you know, your interpersonal relationships. Each one of you guys um, run, I know this is a little poo-poo, but you know, commercial gallery in the sense that you work really hard to promote artists' work and sell it directly. The artists get paid directly without any kind of um, interim mediation other than your guys' relationships. But you all know everybody else in the community. So aside from the, you know, I, had, I took my name tag off, but aside from that kind of labeling, People are really close to sharing ideas, regardless, across all kinds of stuff, you know, all kinds exactly. of ways. Exactly. I love it that you say you have, you have a relationship with your dealer. Because it is like that, yeah. you know. I started off my, my art career in New York, working in galleries in the late 90s in Soho. And, like, you know, watching as a teenager how these galleries would, would kind of move through the business at that time. And, clients they had worked with for a long time, and artists they had represented for a long time, 
and it was a, like an intense education and it is a relationship for an artist and a dealer to be together for decades and decades or to not you know maybe that relationship like a romantic one or like a friendship is only meant to be what it is for five or ten years and, and then you move it. on but it really is that close like an mm -hmm. artist and their I, I hate the word dealer their primary gallerist dealer. representation yeah. I feel like there's not a good word. We complain about this. Yeah, like, that dealer is such a yucky kind yeah. of word. <laughs> <laughs> dealer, but, uh, but, you know, it, it, it's an intense, you know, it is a relationship. Sometimes you're saying things to your gallerist that you wouldn't even say to your spouse or your partner or your lover about this creative work that you poured your heart and soul into, and they can look at it with fresh eyes, and they've known you for, like, you know, 10 years of your creative life or however long it is, and they can give you like honest feedback and encourage you or say this needs more time to incubate. You know what I mean? It's like a real, it's like a real emotional pact that you make with mm -hmm. your gallery. In, yeah. in the best of times. I mean, not every gallerist artist relationship is like that, but at its ideal, like that's what you want. You know, it is a true relationship where it's symbiotic and, and you're both giving and providing and you're both really committed. Like that's, that's the ideal. And I feel like that manifests itself with the shows. You can tell. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you can yeah. tell. Yeah, yeah. When the relationship is there, you can tell when you see the show, and you're exactly right. Mm. The show is better when, or at its best even, when the gallerist and gallery and the artist are, have really worked together. You can, you can see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I agree. I, I feel like it's an honor, too, to, for, for a person to open up. I mean, you talk about the things that are said to, you know, the, the person that you give your artwork to and talk about your artwork with, um, when you're painting or making artwork, you're, you're saying something incredibly personal. You yeah. know, you're, you're making artwork alone in your studio. Uh, the, the deepest parts of yourself are going to come out. And um, it's, it's really a huge privilege to be a part of that conversation and to be able to hear from the artist why did you make these decisions? Um, and then there's layers to it too because you can get into some other more fun and light conversations about just the artist's evolution as a maker too. Mm -hmm. You know, their, their techniques, breaking down where these ideas came from. Um, I love seeing the whole story of an artist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's the best part of the job. You're yeah. exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Seeing that work or talking with them about you know, what they've been working on or the evolution of, of the project they've been working on for a long time. And then to be so excited to share that and to show it up for the whole world to see and say, hey, everybody, look, look yeah. at this. Look, everybody, look at this amazing thing. Like, that is seriously, as like a teenager, what, you know, what drew me to work in a gallery is that that's your job is to get excited about artwork and then hold it up high for everybody to get, see and for everybody to get. We excited. get just excited too as the artist. Yeah. I everybody would say. look at this. Yeah. <laughs> this is amazing. Yeah. No, yeah. we gotta hear more about it. Come here. Like yeah. that's literally yeah. that's the that's the baseline of why we're all involved in this business. Yeah. 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 We're just yeah. fans. Yeah. 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 Totally. Yes, I mean, totally. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean those are two key words. One is excitement, one is fans, and it's sort of you know not that I'm trying to muscle back into the idea of, you know, what, how do we convert all this money? Because part of it also, for me, is it's kind of a culture clash, and part of the intent of asking the question is, you know, I know there's a ton of artists in this room. You know, we all got to deal with our keeping our, our studios open, survive, trying to stay in Austin. This kind of thing where um, Austin is shifting so quickly, it, it feels like a steamroller. And part of it to me is like, if we can, how do we engage so that it, it coalesces a little bit more? Because there's also like the us and them thing, you know, all tech people don't know anything about art and they're all assholes and they all don't, is, is wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, art collectors come from all kinds of, part of it is the new money, old money. Uh, old money, there's philanthropy where there's an obligation when you're that wealthy to support, you know, it's a civic obligation. Um, new m money, tech, it's a really complicated issue. But it's still that kind of question of how to get those people to come in and turn them on. Because the excitement and the fan thing is part of it. And then, you know. Since our conversation the other night, I've been thinking more about this. You know, I think that. Mm -hmm. and, but um, one thing that dawned on me recently is, you know, we talk to each other. 
this is an echo chamber. Um, yeah. And, um, you know, we're all like-minded. That's why we're all here. We all want to talk about this very specific topic. But um, different people are coming from different perspectives. Um, and I don't think that it is a lack of interest, but um, sort of we're not presenting the perspective that they're interested in. And um, I, I'm not 100% sure what that perspective is yet. I think that even among us, we all collect artwork, um, and we all collect artwork for different reasons, slightly different reasons. I think there's a lot of overlap, but everybody sees their collection from a different perspective. Um, and I definitely have realized really recently that um, when talking to people who visit the gallery about why you should collect artwork, you know, well, I'm talking about it from my perspective. I'm talking about why artwork is important to me and how it strikes me. But, you know, that's not everybody's perspective. So um, I think that one of the things that I'm personally going to be really interested in moving forward is trying to get information out of the person who comes into the gallery and figuring out what are they interested in, why do they think art, collecting artwork is important, um, and why moving did, from why there. Why did they come? Why did they come yeah, in? Yeah, why did you come? Yeah. Um, I know why I'm here. <laughs> but, you know, and I think a lot but about that. But I don't that, yet know why you are why here. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe that's one of the disconnects between people who are interested enough in the tech world in order to like pursue that for their life um, and me who's interested in the arts enough to pursue it for my life you know they're completely I would never choose tech personally but um, yeah. you know it's just because I have a different sort of approach to everything yeah, yeah. What, do, what do you think Jill it's like this I, I mean I go into a conversation yeah right? I, I struggle with it um, because I kind of follow my passion, build it, and they will come. Mm -hmm. um, so if I'm presented, do artwork for this group of people, I'm like, no, that never no. yeah. works. <laughs> no, no, yeah, no. I mean, like, but I, I like your idea of maybe tapping in or just having more conversations um, with people that are slightly different than mm -hmm. our, you know, the way we're thinking about art. That seems better to me than trying to market specifically to... Yeah. Marketing right. specifically is always, like, gross and bad yeah. and, like, not yeah. successful. <laughs> well, it's the same feeling as, like, a gallerist when, I don't know if you've had these conversations with artists who ask you, what should I make for the show? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, make whatever you want to make. Right, like, right. you're the artist. Right. I'm here to show your work, I believe, in you as an artist. Right. Um, and us trying to market specifically to tech people, let's say, or yeah. some other industry, would probably backfire the same way. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, part of it, I think, is about freedom, and everybody has the freedom to opt into what they want, so it's, it's partially I'm using the word seduction, which could be the wrong word, but to get people to engage in, I'm going to stutter on this word, I can never pronounce it, equanimity, uh, I can't say it. <laughs> I'm not gonna Being, you know, treating each other as, e treating each other as equals, yeah. you know, <laughs> too many syllables, I'm sorry, yeah. uh, <laughs> um, but treating people as, as, as equals and with respect where there's a conversation, and I think that's part of why a lot of folks go like, you know, can I ask a stupid question because exactly. they're feeling intimidated or they're whatever, but somehow to engage it where everybody's on equal ground, they're talking and it's eye to eye. Mm -hmm. That's what you I know, as human say. beings, not who yeah. knows more who, you know. The art right. world is still really um, intimidating for a lot of people. It's you intimidating know? for me. It's still really intimidating <laughs> for a lot of people. Even in Austin, where we, you know, we're saying the word that the art world here still feels like it's kind of in its adolescence. There's angst, it's building, it's not its infancy, it's bigger than that, but maybe not quite grown up yet. It's like, it's like trying to chug along and like get there to the next level. I don't know what there is. <laughs> but it, even during that time, like, you know, I feel like all of our galleries are approachable and show yeah. great work, and I so respect what's happening at Ivestar, and I've always loved Grey Duck. Great, these are great spaces. Um, but people are intimidated. Who would be intimidated to go into Grey Duck? It's beyond me. <laughs> Who would be intimidated to go hang out at Canopy and, like, have fun all day? But people are. They're intimidated by the art world. They're intimidated by galleries. They're intimidated to ask questions. They see headlines about millions of artwork selling for millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. They think the artwork is, the art world is something they don't understand 
or it's not for them. Um, and, and like, that's the hump we have to get over. Yeah. Right. And I'm not really, and, and that's how you, I, I guess, I'm guessing here, attract more new collectors mm -hmm. that maybe are fresh collectors that maybe have, you know, maybe they bought one piece back in Chicago where they used to live or one piece in Atlanta where they used to live and they're just kind of like interested but not sure how to like proceed. You know, or even if they want to, or what does it mean to have an art collection? And and that's where maybe it falls in our lap to to make the galleries here as visible and welcoming and as promoted and talked about as we possibly can. So that it doesn't feel weird to walk into that space. You're like, oh yeah, I was, oh I you know, my friend, you know. If it's more of a thing where everyone's going and it's more talked about, it's more of a thing. And it doesn't feel so quite, you know, glass castle. Buzz. Then exactly. Yeah. Then maybe people Basically will be a more interested and b less and more importantly less intimidated right. to become involved in the local art scene. Yeah, visibility is important. I think that a lot of the just sort of like awareness of the arts in Austin falls short a little bit. There's a lot of people who totally. I think are interested in the arts and they just. Don't know where the galleries are. Yeah, there's a barrier somewhere. There's a for sure. They don't know yeah. the art galleries. Yeah. We've been in our space 15 years. People who live upstairs in the condos mm -hmm. upstairs come down and go, "How long have you been here? Yeah. <laughs> How long has this gallery been here?" I go, "15 years." <laughs> and they go, "Whoa!" Like they're shocked. Yeah. That is, I it mean, happens to all of us. It's yeah. crazy yeah. but yeah. true. Like the fact that the, ex I mean, you know, <laughs> the exposure maybe needs to. So we need, we need more art galleries. Mm. More art spaces, I think, of all Yes, kinds. art spaces. Well, more I art agree. venues. I agree. More art spaces and more writers, more... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, That's true. true. I mean, the, does the Chronicle have an arts, dedicated arts part? I know the it's, Statesman it's, does not. The Statesman does not at all. And the Chronicle a, has shrunk and shrunk and shrunk, shrunk and shrunk. Their visual arts component. I mean, thank, mm -hmm. thank goodness I mean, music for, gets like pages and pages. Film gets pages and pages. The I visual mean, arts, it's like... Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. tiny. I mean, sightlines, yeah. but I don't know... Um, sightlines, yeah. thank God for sightlines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you guys are talking kind of about like points of contact, right? Because um, mm -hmm. I, indeed, I, I appreciate my galleries, I appreciate my brokers, and those are all, for me, points of contact, and they're like my little tentacles, you know? For sure. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm, I'm their tentacle as well, like it works both ways, we're like a really weird shape, virus, right. I guess. Yeah, um, I think that you can actually use your artists as well as a point of contact, mm -hmm. where like, you're talking about, oh yeah, the Chronicle is shrinking, or like people don't know about the gallery right here, but like your artists are a point of contact, especially because like the gallery space can be intimidating, and we are promoting online, and we are promoting in a less intimidating space. Right. Um, I really need to trust my galleries. Like, I need to trust that my work doesn't get lost, doesn't get damaged, doesn't anything like that. Um, but they need to trust me too. Like, okay, if a month after somebody saw that the gallery wants to buy it, um, I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of, it's kind of that like, romantic relationship. I think a lot of relationships are based on trust. I think what would be really interesting if we can, as our tiny little art scene in Austin, can create something where like, I, I can tell Kevin, hey, which is true, I had two collectors from California that moved here that just bought two of my works, he keeps his collectors a little secret from me, and that's normal. Because I'm, um, you know, well, like... You could ask me. Well, yeah, <laughs> but, it's, but it, it's a thing. And I kind of keep my collectors to myself in a way, but what about starting something where I can share collectors with you, and you can sell other artists' works to my collectors. When you sell one of my artworks to my collectors, you, I won't you won't charge that much of a fee. It's part but of like, um, creating like this kind of hub where we open up the scary space and the visual space and kind of connect them together and it's like, since we are so small and can actually do that, I think that would be a great way to involve new collectors <coughs> that just moved here that it, have just gone It's true. Them. Yeah, some artists who are really social and really connected, like you, um, are a great first line of contact with new collectors. 
First of all, all collectors love to meet the artist if they're able and if the artist is is okay with that. You know, it really um, fortifies their connection to the work, and it's you know, all collectors would, would love that experience. But not all artists love to be social. A lot of artists are very anti that kind of lifestyle and really just want to kind of be at home working or with the family or doing residencies abroad or something like that. They don't want to be doing that, like that, like pounding the pavement connected not, work. Not every artist has to be that way for of you. Of course. Either. It's like if you bring me that much collectors, that could be a lot of like that. Exactly. You know, then you're you're doing the usual thing. That doesn't change nothing. But it is mm. like another a it conduit. Device. It's a yeah. conduit. Yeah. It's yeah. It makes it more interconnected. You know? It's a way of sharing. I know. We were kind of like chuckling at the idea of like being possessive about collectors the other day because the. <laughs> The buy, you know, the pool of like significant buyers in Austin is, is so small that it feels a little silly to be like, that's my product. Like, yeah. I mean, you know, it's like, oh, come on, all right. Yeah. But, you know, it's like, where, you know, if they're going to buy from me, why wouldn't they buy from I, you? I certainly and why don't they buy from, like, that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, to be the possessive, I, I don't, I don't well, think that that exists among us. And I think that maybe the possessiveness that you're referring to historically is because dealers don't want collectors going straight and buying out of the artist studio yeah. and you cut out right. the deal altogether. Right. I mean, that's the reason but why. That's the trust if there was a trust thing where the dealer would get 20% or something to keep the lights on, to keep our employees paid, to, you know, to cover the rent, to keep the beautiful space, to show your gorgeous body of work, to share it with the whole world in a beautiful place, that's not free. And so I think that's where the possessiveness comes into play, is that, like, you know, we don't want collectors trying to work work around us, and we, you know everybody needs to make money, and, and artists need to make money first. But for sure, the gallery has to pay its bills. But I think yeah, the, the it would be a trust fund where you give. Yes, so exactly. Like the artists, it's not that you would share all your collectors with me. It's I share my collectors with you because I hate talking about price. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, never yeah. fun. That's so not the fun part. Look at them and I see it and tell them I'm amazing because I'm not going to tell them I'm amazing. You know, like you know. Yeah. Like, I think uh, this sort of like feeling that things are mysterious is something that keeps people outside of the art market in general, and it makes gallery spaces feel intimidating. And I think that there's a lot of like almost perceived mystery, and yeah. things aren't as mysterious as they seem. Like, what is the role of a gallerist? What is the role of a museum curator or an art consultant or an interior designer? You know, how does everybody fit in? There's a lot of space to ask questions and to just say, hey, I've been thinking about this. Can we talk about it? Yeah. And I don't really know anybody that would say, no, I'm not comfortable talking about that. Um, and I think that's, you know, whose shoulders does it lay on um, to ask questions? Whoever's got the questions. Um, yeah. But it's definitely up to us to sort of be the front line of that, I think, mm -hmm. because I think there is a perception that we know more, maybe, but I don't think that that's actually true. Um, we're in contact with a lot more people, um, but everybody does things a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. um, there is no rule book to the arts, and um, you know there are some artists, for instance, that I work with that want to sign a contract. The ma vast majority of them don't because it is trust. It's just all trust. Mm -hmm. um, if I wrong an artist or an artist wrongs me, it doesn't matter what the contract says. Um, right. Agreed. So. We don't do contracts. No. Right. Do contracts? I mean, just a minor contract for the specific show that we're doing, but right. no representation of contracts. No. So exhibition based yeah. Yeah. agreement. Yeah. yeah. A lot of I think a lot of. Um, The aspect of engaging people, a lot of it for me is like it's actually stories. Like, what is the work about? What is, you know, like uh, Colin, is that his name? Yeah. Colin's a Colin great, Doyle, our director. That guy he's, writes really great he's stuff and copy, yeah. you know, and, it, and you pick the thing up and, excuse my language, I'm sorry. I don't know if we're still streaming. But uh, anyway, sorry. Um, anyway, you know, it's really engaging. And this is another reason why. Uh, I mean, all three of you are engaging, and when I said like the um, 
the mensch factor is off the rail. Whenever I walk in, all of you always walk, the, you know, we always talk. When I first met you, you were like, so what do you think, you know, and you too, I mean, we're always talking about it. But it's like the story of the work, how it was made, what it's about, where the artists live, you know, who are they. It's not this cut. You know, it's not this dry. You know, like they're trying to read a manual. It's um, it's it's really colorful and really engaging and it's storytelling. So I think a lot of it is personality. You know, mm. um, and all three of you are right up front. Um, and I think in that way it's really accessible. And uh, I think you can. There's a conversion rate. You know, if somebody comes in, they're a little scared, and you engage them, and you start having a really good time they're going to feel a little more comfortable next time. And then they're going to feel a little more comfortable the next time. Exactly. And the other thing, too, is a lot of... Um, I've only been in Austin for a little while, but uh, a lot of my collectors, like in San Francisco and in New York, they're social butterflies. They love it. They love going to the parties. They love getting attention because they buy art. They love, you know, there's this whole <laughs> kind of thing. It's just like, ooh, yeah. And it's fun. But anyway, um, uh, hang on. Yeah, let's open it up. Yeah. Um, so two things keep coming out uh, to me in the conversation about how are we trying to get in front of and attract this money toward or the people who have it and are mm -hmm. moving into Austin. And um, you know, having lived in some different cities and also growing up in Texas, but you know, moving and coming back. I mean, the thing that's striking me is Austin is filled with so many amazingly talented artists, mm -hmm. but as we talked about, as y'all talked about early on, not a huge number of galleries sort of given. Yeah. It's an infrastructure, basically. Yeah, and so, so there's that issue, but then there's also um, like the property values and all of the you know, craziness that's going on with real estate. And you know, one of the things that I keep thinking about is like, yes, y'all are so good at talking about the artist's work and so good at doing the things that we don't want to do. And there needs to be more of you. And I feel like there's a lot of artists like trying to, you know, create spaces to show work and, and you know, some of them are doing it really well. And most of them are doing it just because they're desperate to get their work out there. Like there is just, I mean, there's yeah, a reason so many artists in Austin show in Houston and Dallas and don't show here at all. I mean, it's a little crazy. Like, I feel like there could be more mentorship, there could be more reaching out. There's so many buildings going up and they're going to have space that they can't fill right away in, like, the ground oh, yeah. floors. I mean, because it's so expensive. Like, what if they gave a discount rate? Because let's all agree the artists bring people, art brings people, and they want their buildings to to be a place where people come and, oh, now they've seen the rest of the fabulous thing that I've created that took up, you know, 50 stories or whatever. But I feel like there's a lot of opportunity to do, like, mentoring and offshoots, and that becomes the space where people get introduced. People start to learn, oh, art's not intimidating, it's fun to look at. Hmm. And, and I will say that some of the shows that I've been in that I felt like had the sort of best of uh, bringing people who weren't just part of our world or who weren't part of the, I've seen that person at every show I've gone to in the past two years, which isn't many, but um, were ones that were put together by artists in large spaces in buildings where there was a big office and they hadn't finished out this part and the artists were like, can, hey, can we do a show here? And like the employees of the building were like, oh, this is great. I didn't know there was art like this. And, mm -hmm. and you know, in another space that it was literally the hallway of yeah. a, a office space. And it was the, the offshoot of that gallery. And, and someone else was assisting mm -hmm. with the curating, but the, you know, it, was, it really was like a mentorship. And I just feel like there are, I'm sure, a lot of people in Austin who might be interested in becoming flowers and might be interested in curating shows and they don't know how to break in because you know you graduate and then you move <laughs> you know you move to new york or san francisco or houston or dallas or chicago but you, you don't stay here for that career and 
that to me is where the biggest piece is missing because the art there are, the artists are here I mean we're here mm -hmm. and you know it's a little crazy that just the level of talent and the lack of representation that's happening even in this room you know and so to me that's a huge missed opportunity and it does get into the trust part of, like you have to trust that who you're working with isn't going to steal your clients and you have to there's a lot of trust that has to happen, but when you can step into that scary place, I feel like that's when really, yeah. that's really good, good things start to, to move. Yeah. So. I don't know that it's a lack of trust. I mean, once you once you commit to working with a rep or a gallerist. I would think it's a relief to have all no, of I that think y'all have play. to trust. Y'all have to trust when you bring someone in to be your like. I'm gonna mentor I've, you. I've personally um, met. Oh, oh, I'm, 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 I'm not talking about you trusting so me because I, believe we, me. We I'm talk a lot trust. about. I think other gallerists talk a lot about in this city. Um, there is no competition. There is no sense of competition here. Um, you know, we need more well, you collaboration. Think we, need more we need more you know? collaboration. We're, 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 about, you know, yeah. we're, we're all working. Yeah. There's not a yeah. lack of collaboration because there's a sense of, like, you know, too much competition. There's a lack of collaboration because we all have our noses so hard to the grindstone yeah. yeah. trying to yeah. turn the wheel and, yeah, keep, and, right and right keep the business going and keep our artists happy yeah. and, and draw in collectors and, and make it all happen and go. That's why there's a lack of collaboration. Right. Because we're all working so goddamn hard. Yeah, Just I, like all the artists in the room. I too. know. It goes both ways. I think you're right about the real estate thing. Maybe more pop-ups are the answer for people who are interested mm -hmm. in being a gallerist. You know, okay, they, they go to school here. They move off to Houston and Chicago and San Francisco and New York and all these places. That's where they get their education. That's what I did. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you come back here and you know what's what. And you have an appreciation. And, okay, maybe you can't afford that ground floor space in the hip neighborhood that you wanted. But you do a pop-up and you try it out with your artist friends. Like, I mean, you know, it's like, you, it just has to happen. I don't know how to convince future gallerists to take that plunge. It takes a lot of tenacity, it takes a lot of determination. Mm. Emily Lee can tell you that. Yeah. Philip Niemeyer can tell you that. <laughs> yeah. uh, it, is, it is hard work and it is not cheap. Right, and because and I'm it saying, takes like, a ton of can really help. Exactly. So, you know, I do, I would love to see more of um, the shed just open, which I haven't even been to, but I've heard all about. I was, I was like the only person right, who was that, not at the opening. And, that's part of the, and, that's <laughs> and I was tearing my hair out with FOMO. Yeah, but that's the artist <laughs> doing that, though. And that's the thing. Exactly. Like, and they feel like they have to go Certain, certain people space. have approached yeah. me about their own ideas for spaces and things. Yeah. I'm all ears. I'm yeah. like, absolutely, yeah. 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 Let me hear about it. Let me hear what your thoughts are. Yeah. Um, how can I be helpful? Because just like artists crave more spaces, we crave more spaces uh -huh. because this is a conversation about visibility, is a conversation about being able to reach more people. And if there's 10 galleries in Austin, the city of more than a million people, you know, yeah. we're, we're really That's lacking. Part of and questions, right? we, we feel that same thing too mm -hmm. we feel the that we should be able to you know have more of a presence in the city um not us individually but the gallery sort of model in particular yeah. i've always wondered if it's chicken or egg mm -hmm. because you I know, know are, are there buyers here you know should i risk opening up a place am i going to be able to you know, I mean, I guess you've been successful, so there are buyers here, right? Well, I but opened a gallery here because there's a ton of artists. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's a shipping page. Shipping yeah. is low. Drive it on by. But I, I'm always wondering about Houston and Dallas and, like, is... Um, is it more institutional, like, because they have bigger museums and they have more of a, um, a culture about that and so then the galleries become you know through that or is it money what were you going to say my question <laughs> sorry i we're going on that I, I think is awesome and trying to make the comparisons between i mean i think austin has a history of not supporting the arts because there hasn't been a big museum like there is down in san antonio exactly. right? yeah. But that's, yeah. that, exactly. i think that's a separate thing I, I think one of the things i'd love to hear from each of you if you could do either do you have anecdotes of of having 
some one of these mystery people that is coming in with <laughs> money and and actually becoming a collector or becoming a new thing like because we all I mean we all say well maybe it's because in well, why I bring this up is like my the culture in Brooklyn for example is completely different than than here right like you talk to people on the street and it's like to talk about art with anybody and anywhere is like normal. It's a normal yeah. thing. And, but here, yeah. you know, it's like unless you're talking about a band, it, like it, it takes yeah. a, another leap. However, we do know that there's money coming in there. People are curious of all different backgrounds. Have you? Do you guys have any stories to share of these of of a new patron that did move to Austin? Obviously, keeping names and stuff quiet or whatever, <laughs> but just like where that energy you felt like, oh, this is this is that, or is it completely blank and there is no story? I, I have stories I yeah, mean, with, sure with people do. who are collecting the first piece yeah. and, um, you know, it's, it's really rewarding for me to see people say, wow, now that it's in my home, like, this is a whole different thing. Sorry, and sorry to interrupt, but to, put, put to what, did, what did you learn from that in, in thinking about your business as it's growing, too? I mean, obviously the passion, we all are passionate about the art, and I think it's interesting to look at the business side at the same time. Sorry. <laughs> the the business side as in like how do I change what I'm doing from there or how does it affect my business or well thinking about like the energy of when it happened like did you feel like you had done something that made it feel more welcoming to that person when they came through I mean obviously every story is different I would say every sale is a bit of a grind every sale is difficult to make Sure. Um, you have to, I mean, there's a, there's a really wide gap between people coming into the gallery and saying, I love this, and Ooh. actually purchasing it. Absolutely. So right. it's our job, or I would say the way that I look at my job when it comes to selling is not to sell artwork, because nobody wants to be sold artwork. I'm not going to convince somebody to, to drop $10,000 on something that they don't like. Same. Right? But it is about, as far as the business part of things, it's about making that jump more accessible to them okay. by, yeah. you know, just moving slow and... Hmm. Excuse me. But I, I think it's like, why not, though? Like, in the, why not so? why, like, the culture I'm thinking about, like, in Chicago, too, like, you, you have people that come in and they're just like, yeah, I'll buy it, you know, like, and the, the, that, that is yeah. part of it, or in, in New York... Okay. And, and like, how do we nurture deal. nurture yeah. that attitude to say, yeah, I love it, I have the means, why not go ahead and do it? There's yeah. definitely times where I just say, so would you like to take it? Would you like to take it home? You know, just ask a question. Mm -hmm. That can be a very scary question to ask. It's like asking somebody out on a date. But, <laughs> you know, it's like, hey, it's here for you. You can bring it home today if you'd like. Um, so there's a bit of that, but rarely... Rarely does somebody buy something from my gallery, at least, and they just come in and say, yep, I'll take it. It's yeah. it's a longer conversation. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I know it is. I, I, yeah, I've had people from Houston come into my place and say, I will take it. But not really? anyone from Austin. I <laughs> <laughs> my question yeah. is, like, as we talk about this idea of people being intimidated or, like, you know, these new potential collectors, I guess I feel a little bit, like, not to be antagonistic, but like the fact that we're, um, this is like the second mid sized smaller city that I've lived in, and we're surrounded by bigger cities. And so I think that the issue is like being a little bit over, not a little bit, we're overshadowed. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I mean, I have an example of going to the Nasher and I was like talking to the front, get, like, get, you know, like front desk people and then saying, like, where are you from? And I'm like, oh, I live in Austin. And they're like, oh, you guys have some stuff going on. <laughs> <laughs>
They weren't <laughs> really, I mean, if you can like us. This is like, like a weekend. I had some friends who were at the Blanton, and we had an opening, we had a show at the Carver, and yeah. an artist was there from New York, and they just started talking to him, and he was like, oh, I, I don't have to be at the airport until such and such time, and what I'll come over and see the show, right? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like to get eyes, like it has to be bigger than just the galleries. I feel like the structure of yeah, the place yeah. has yeah. to be bigger Absolutely. because we can go over to Blanton and look at the labels to see who's local that collects. Exactly, because they do collect because they're the ones who are donating. Because they're the ones who donate, and then the how names do are right to, there. The names are there. So <laughs> how do you that's a little of Tammy Smart to not <laughs> <laughs> like just overlook what's yeah. happening here, right? No, you're right. That's I mean, that's interesting that, you know, Dallas and Houston have such a long history with the fine arts and, and with their institutions and with collecting and with philanthropy. It's Austin is not the same and does not have this history. There's a new art consultant in town, Nick Campbell, and I went to a talk that he did when he first came to town. He hasn't been here very long. Um, and uh, and he was asking a, a panel of artists and um, some people from the contemporary, like, what is it, the same question, like, what is different between Austin and Dallas and Houston? Like, why is Austin struggling to get the kind of arts funding that Dallas and Houston have? And they were like, yeah, it's the, it's the you know, it's money, man. Like, there's always been more money in Dallas and more money in Houston, period. And that Austin was always this hub of, like, government and then education with UT. You know, it was not a place of big commerce. It was not a boom town the way Houston was. It didn't have the same big ins art institutions that the other big cities had. So yeah, so that's right. So we're already kind of set back because I mean, if you if if you're going to follow that theory, because because of the history of the city and like the thing importance that was placed in other cities versus here, you know, and so so yeah, we're missing that. I mean, when Laura opened her gallery. 17 or 18 years ago, there was no contemporary museum. I think Art House was in its infancy, and the Blanton had just raised money to start work on its current site. Like, there was no... When I moved away from Austin in 1996, it's, it's not because I couldn't wait to get out, although New York City is pretty, pretty seductive, but, like, there were no art jobs here. There were no galleries here, there were no museums here. There was no, if I wanted to get a job in the art world, there was nothing from, there was literally not a single job that I could have. There were only DIY warehouse spaces, but nothing that paid anything that I could pay my rent with. And so, you know, so a lot has changed in that 25 years. Um, but you're right, like the institutions are few. We have two. Right. And they're kind of new. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not sure when Art House turned into the contemporary. I should look up that history, but not that uh, yeah, it's not that long. <laughs> It's not that long, and then, you know, the Blanton kind of becoming the powerhouse that it is, and with the collection that it has, and the building that it has, and the showrooms that it has, that's all new, too. So it's all, it's all so freshy. Like, it's still so green. Yeah. I feel like that greenness presents opportunity, though. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah, so, like, I'm coming from a European perspective, and I had, like, um, we were talking about it earlier, I had this one show, uh, I got a grant from Holland, because we have grants, you know, like, and I think that's... <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, there are $20,000. So, yeah, so, like, that's not, like, I, uh, Europe is more, but, like, it's in... Yeah, it's very facilitated here. So, right. um, it makes a lot... And it facilitated for the galleries, too, um, which creates a very, like, um, put a dash of pigment here, and, like, it's very inspiring, because, like, all the work is, like, super contemporary, and so I'm fucking sellable, but very beautiful experience for a lot of people. Right. Um, my friend is over here from Holland right now, and she's like, how did, I'm so impressed you sell work. Nobody in Holland sells work. Everybody gets so dependent of this, like, um, Oh, the, like, cultural system. support from the government. And, and it's, and it's, um, it goes so deep, because it's, like, it goes into the galleries, and it, and it, and it continues mm. further from there. So and you think that's not a good thing? No, or what do you not, think? I, I, I fucking love Austin. I, I do not like the elite uh, idea. Like, when I first came here, I, I saw it too. Like, I don't think we're fully appreciated. And I do think it's it's also because, um, which I really like, is we're very open um, for everybody to be part of this community. Yeah. So, um, I think, for 
talking about this country, uh, I think we have a very crafty art scene. Mm -hmm. And I think that's mm -hmm. kind of maybe from an outside perspective, the problem with here. Like I've gotten brands to do the East Austin Studio Tour and I could be like, easy, this many people come. And they're like, whoa, we want to support them. And then the pictures are not like, ooh, I cannot really show everything because I know that they, it's not, it's, it's not that level. And I, I don't really want, like it's very complicated in my mind because like, I don't want to be like that. I want mm -hmm. it to be open. I want it to be open source and I want everybody to participate and I don't want to put like value on stuff. Oh, I think we've had this conversation a lot. There's yeah. like a butting of heads at, when you're at this level between being inclusive and making sure everyone We're, feels welcome yeah. and also having standards. And I think that's a hard yeah. thing. Yeah. I think right it's a now. really hard thing to mitigate. We're here right now. Yeah. In Austin, right. we're here right now. This is where we are. Yeah. This is yeah. why it's not, that's what I'm thinking. This is why it's not working for us. Right. This is what people say in Houston about Austin. This is what people Oh, that it's too crafty? Is that what you say? East and West Austin Studio Tour, that kind of mix, mm -hmm. which I love. I feel like we're, like in this room, we are the creators. We're about what's going to happen right here, right now. Right. Awesome. So cool, right? Like we can do like whatever, whatever you guys show in your galleries. That's what's happening right now. Whatever we make, that's what's happening right now. And that's the fun part of being part of the small community. But like even getting grants from a place that gets grants, you're like, yeah, we want to give you a grant because you do have so much patrons coming by. But then when they see what the quality of the work is, and I like I I don't want to put any like value on that, but like I I do think that's like kind of what we're doing. Um, yeah. And I think like the open sourceness of Austin, for example, the East and West Austin Studio Tour, the fact that you can sign up no matter who you are, um, it just puts a puts a certain quality on our work. And, and right. of course, like the politics that we're working here in, in mm -hmm. Texas and just like the non appreciation of like our yeah. work yeah. and whole life. Yeah. I think Maybe we didn't fully I answer Chad's question. I actually want to answer question. a little bit. Like, I feel like I maybe feel like these institutions it. are try like yeah. as they rise because you're right. Like when right. I got here, hmm. uh, like you know, I heard a story about like the Tipperary being in a bank or something. You know what I mean? Like I talked to like, Michael <laughs> Chester and they were like, right. "You don't yeah, know yeah. what it was I'm like." Well, I think if I get my like, my like, my like, like a, well, as they rise, I, do you feel like that's I don't feel like they have any. Personally, I don't feel like they have any responsibility to serve me. And and the reason for that is because people who work at those institutions rotate through. Right. I mean, and, and I have experience trying to communicate with people at different places, and that roles are always different people, filled with different people every, every year. So it would be amazing for those institutions to talk more about the local scene and to give more information, but I certainly can't rely on that, and I can't wait for that to happen, and I need to do like my own job to spread, to, to promote my own gallery, my own artists. Um, I would love for that to happen, but um, I have no experience with it. Is I mean, anybody, have well, you with people on the board, or board? Oh, not the board. The board of what? Laura Reynolds does, oh, but Laura. yeah, oh, they're like. <laughs> well, so like, I, I went to a visit Austin meeting, um, to learn more information about like what is, what is Austin promoting, as this visit Austin is like their you know the city's promotional arm, and they don't have art, fine art as or visual it's art as, as yeah. one of their oh as God. one of their pillars. They have you know music and food and they didn't, uh, they didn't have public art. No, yeah. no, they're not, they're they like support that. Uh, yeah, it's it's not in there. It's not in there. Yeah. Not in there. Yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of really Lots big of hills to climb. I mean, yeah. Jill, kind of back to Tammy's question, Jill, do you feel like you've met collectors or know collectors who prefer to buy artwork in Dallas or Houston because they feel like those are more art-centric cities? I mean, I, if that's what we're talking about, like, does Austin brand. feel, like does Austin feel yeah, yeah, too yeah. small yeah. for yeah. collectors? Even new collectors who are today to want to spend their money, maybe they feel more secure in Dallas or Houston, yeah. more art city. Do you? F I mean, I don't know that I've felt that. But I, I mean, we we kind of joked around about how, um, like, I mean, I guess I'll use Tammy as an example. She had a show in New York, right? And then I showed her, and then these collectors come in, 
oh, we saw Tammy's work in New York. Yeah. Let's buy something. Yes. <laughs> yes. And you said, oh, good. Validation. Yeah. I mean, I think before. Yeah. They had. But they, you know, oh, they had the boss. Yeah, they yeah. needed that little yeah. push. Yeah. They didn't buy it in New York. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing I feel like as an artist is like, our responsibility too is not to just be regional, right? right. So, like, if we're only thinking about yeah. here, like, that doesn't work for the gallery either. Like, you know what I mean? Because there can be this cross pollination where someone Absolutely. will see the work somewhere else and then mm -hmm. they have more of an appreciation here and vice versa and just trying to figure out how the money will work, right? So, who takes a cut of what? But, you know, it lifts all ties. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we've, we've, we've used that analogy many times and you're kind of talking about legitimacy and validating the artwork and, and everyone agreeing on the merit and the value and an artist's career building and increasing and that having meaning in dollars and in clout and in press and that's kind of what Steve was talking about too and that we talked about during our conversation last week, you know, who decides? Who decides? What is the structure? How does having a show in New York make your artwork sell for more here in Austin? There, I mean, this structure is what nobody wants to talk about, but it's like really, really real, and it's really, really meaningful. Certainly for all the artists, absolutely for the dealers. Um, Kevin has Kevin just wrapped up a pop-up show in New York, which was super cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's talked about maybe doing other projects up there, like. There is that, you know, yes, reaching outside of Austin brings a lot of value. I think it's it just does. Yeah. Like, these, yeah. this is just true. I, you know, I think about if you have the, connections to larger cities, it is meaningful. I think about approaching the, the sort of experience of buying artwork like fine dining, too. Um, the food itself isn't all that you're buying. Your, the, the, the approach to the restaurant itself, walking into the restaurant, the service you get while you're in the restaurant, all of those things matter um, to give it a five-star review. Um, and right now, Austin is sort of lacking, you know, that whole approach. <laughs> yep. Well, Rita. You've had a question for a while. Rita! Yeah. Oh my god, I can't wait. Yeah, let, let's open it up for a few more questions. Yeah, and then one. Oh my god, I'm like, oh. <laughs> It's like curating a hot party, 
you know? It's like, you want all kinds, and it takes all kinds. you got to have all the kinds. If you're depending on one kind, you're, it's failure. Yeah, yeah. We did a whole thing for the school for the blind, and we blindfolded everybody. Some of the work was made by small so We did spell, we did music, we did, it was, it was a lot. Yeah, and it cool. was great. Yes, I see that. I'd like to wind this down a little bit because we're starting to run over a little bit and I want to get these guys out of the hot lights. There's a few people who've been wanting to ask a question. Let's do like two or three more. Um, we got Emily, we got Sean. Um, and then this is, I'm really, this is wonderful. And I think it's just getting the conversation started. And like I said, bar's open for a while. So we can still hang out and keep talking. But I think it'd be good to kind of rest a little bit. But, uh, Sean, you've been holding up your hand quite a bit. Uh, you all spoke of uh, um, lack of collaboration and sort of possessiveness. Has there ever been an attempt at a larger collaboration between gallerists or both, like, each other? We're both on the board of Art Austin, which is a collection of 35 different organizations, museums and galleries, um, and, you know, we're in contact with a lot of different programs in town. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's sort of what I was referencing when I was talking about uh, communicating with different institutions is those people are always rotating. So, you know, you have a relationship with somebody one year and they move on to a new job. Galleries are, of course, way more consistent because a gallery is usually owned by just one person and that person isn't going to be leaving. Um, but yeah, um, but there, there is there is constant attempts at um, collaboration, and you know we're talking about our own new ideas, and I think that there's always those those rumblings. Um, I have to say though, coming from Minneapolis, museums and galleries did not want to speak to each other at all. When I first moved down here and opened a place. Like, like, Art Austin approached me, and it's like, yeah, we get together for happy hour, we, like, hang out, we, like, you know, and I was like, what? <laughs> so it was way more friendlier down here um, than what I was used to, um, which I thought was great. Um, but it is, like, herding cats. I mean, there's 35 of us, and so, yeah. and we all have day jobs. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. but... We're open. We're certainly open to more, and, we're, and I think yeah, there's yeah. always conversations about how can we do do a better job. Um, it's just about the commitment. Um, you know, we're all working regular hours or probably more, um, and to put those days aside once a month or once a quarter to do some sort of event or some sort of cross promotion. Um, it's just difficult for everybody's schedules to line up. It's, it's, it can be tough, but we're working towards it. I think we that are. we're getting yeah. better at it. And events like this, thank you for bringing us together because yeah. this That's is, what, you know, one more This is how step. it happens. Yeah. yeah. And face to face, too. I mean, absolutely. you know, we can be on Instagram all day or text or whatever, but when we're all in the room together, it's so much more meaningful. So the okay. solution to the problem is so <laughs> <laughs> And then we'll, uh, then we'll hit the bar. <laughs> cool, cool. Um, yeah, I just, I just want to express how like grateful I am that there's a this big room with many different kinds of people involved in the arts. Like this is it's exactly great. the opportunity to like have these bubbling, uncertain encounters and ask questions that looks really special. Um, but yeah, I, I've actually always wanted to ask like every gallerist in Austin, Texas, this. Um, but. You know, as not only because we're so kind of on the internet and sharing work via websites and Instagram, but also because um, because we're kind of tasking ourselves, even though we're not Houston, Dallas, LA, New York, Chicago, we're tasking ourselves with like being those places. It seems like I, I would just be curious to hear what y'all's perspective is on on one hand you're trying to get 
more people into the art scene and involve like people who aren't artists into the scene, tech workers, blah blah blah. But at the same time, you're having to do like double activism and also tend to the artists and tend to the kinds of art that you show and support art that isn't just like a Jeff Koons, you know, um, like a packaged perfect object. Um, so like, how do you all negotiate? And do you think it's mutually exclusive to support? more installation-based, more ephemeral, more programmatic, social art. And it's always kind of the gross elephant in the room that no one wants to talk about, and it's never a fun question to ask, but like, is it mutually exclusive? Like, do you think that in order to be a thriving art scene that involves people outside of, outside of the conceptual artist community, you know, do you have to kind of focus the attention on more object-based commercial artworks? That's a great question. And is it a necessary loss to, you know, use process-based artists or research-based artists? And if so, then what opportunities present themselves with that quandary? And maybe an opportunity is, because we've all noticed that, like, institutions wall text now always kind of prepackages the show according to some social issue of the moment. Yeah, yes. Could we... Dying for relevancy, always. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> is huge, so I, I don't know. Say, it's it's huge. Huge. This is a whole <laughs> other talk, like yeah. it's vast. But I mean, yeah. and, and I don't I don't do enough, but I've always like my husband and I have talked about this, like events outside of the actual shows. Like we sh we shows films and yeah. like puppet shows and, mm -hmm. and I don't do enough of it but it's um it, it interacts with other different types of people and brings different type of people into the gallery. Um, we used to do experimental response cinema. We'd host them. Um, we used to do poetry readings. Um, I've only had a few performance artists, um, so I can't talk to that. But I'm open for it. Um, but yeah, it. I mean, I'm I'm not opposed to it, and I'm not. I mean, I don't think I could have a complete empty space and have a performance artist come in, you know, once a week. I don't know that that's going to be something that I could possibly do, but programming it in between or during shows, it's totally a possibility, and I'm, I want to do more of that. For me, um, I don't think that they're mutually exclusive. I think that, again, it's like a question about how many galleries are there and how much space do we have and time to have in order to, like, show a bunch of different people's works. But... You know, at my gallery, I have two different exhibition spaces, and I use one for work like this because um, I do think that it's important. It's not always performance art or installation art, but I it mostly is um, video. There's a video group show up right now, um, and on the other hand, 
in order for me to continue to do what I do, I have to make sales consistently. Um, that's my job. That's like how I can stay there. Um, so that pressure is always there. Um, and that, you know, like Joe, I could never have both spaces full of, um, you know, time-based media that nobody's probably going to collect. Um, I need to have stuff that's, that's going to sell in order to make those really special moments happen. But, but I love performance art, and over the course of the next four months, I'll have at least two. I agree. It's a hard nut to crack, um, and I think there are other spaces in town doing it, uh, doing it really well, um, much better than LRG. Uh, I think Colab has amazing yeah. performative, yeah. incredible. I mean, that drum light installation <laughs> earlier this year blew my mind. It was the most incredible thing. Um, I have to shout out again to Northern Southern, their yeah. two years of COVID programming yeah. Yeah. did two incredible shows outside <laughs> where people could safely engage, <laughs> yeah, where people could safely engage with art, could discover art, could follow art and shop. It Stumble was, into art. It was literally <laughs> the coolest thing. Like, I was all about that. And so there are other venues in town already doing this way better than what Laura Reynolds Gallery does. Like Laura Reynolds Gallery does what it does at a high level and and we work hard to do that. And I think there are already other spaces in engaging those more experiential ideas that are a thing that just doesn't really go on in our space. And I will also say that I think there is a great history of spaces who kind of do tandem things. Like they have the gallery space where they show and sell objects that make the wheel turn and makes everything go and you know lets everyone live and then they have like a parallel program if you have the staff and the time and the space to do such thing you have a parallel program that is more experiential things i think all of us are working with such tiny tiny staff that that's not possible in our spaces but i have seen that happen in other spaces where that works great where you have the gallery space for tangible things that are for purchase, painting, sculpture, what have you, and then you have a roving experimental program. And I think that's a great way to kind of offset is when you have them working parallel. You are not one or the other, or it's not this month we're showing sculpture and next month I'm showing this ephemeral performance or land art thing that's going to disappear. But when you have them in tandem so that one can support the other and fund the other, right. like that's Absolutely. how you, that's how you that's how you do it. Cloud tree. That's okay. a cloud tree. Yeah. That, like that's that's a great model. And I will say that I think the Contemporary Museum actually does an amazing job with their uh, with their experiential programming. You know, whether the artists be local or not, I, I'm always impressed with all the kind of like really cool experiential art that they uh, that they provide. So that's what I have to say about that. That was a hell of a question. I mean, yeah, that yeah. was tough. I mean, well, it's that was really a really big one. subject, and you guys did great. You just kind of rolled through. We can do a little Shh. index or <laughs> Anyway, we're going to wind it down. As I said, you guys are welcome to stay and hang out, talk some more, you know, relax if you would like. Um, but I just want to thank all of you for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.